Good morning. So I'm back down here again. Almost done with our kitchen. I didn't want to start setting up there until we got everything done. Then I'm going to show you our new fancy kitchen that we got in in our house. So, but I was looking at these weapons of mass destruction that my wife has, and uh, so we got we got the thing that plucks out your eyeball. We have the scalpel, which I don't know what all she's doing with the scalpel, but now somebody needs to tell me, what is this? I have no idea what this thing is. That's heavy. I mean, that's like a ball on the end of this thing. And then we got a little ball on the other end of it. So, I mean, does it just back and forth, back and forth? <laughs> they are weapons, Kosha. I'm telling you, these are weapons. I don't know. I don't know if this is like when she's getting ready to pluck your eye out or cut off a body part that she takes this ball and donks you on the head, you know, knock you out. Or I don't know, but I don't think she's licensed to be carrying these kinds of things. All this is down. I need to pay attention to what my wife is doing when she's in the basement. <clears throat> That's about what I've decided because this is, uh, and I don't think, Kathy, it's for breaking glass. I think it's more to whack you on the head. That's what I'm thinking. So, <laughs> thanks, Dan. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to find out if that's a, a donker on the head, right? <clears throat> so, uh, anyway, well, <clears throat> uh, I have to laugh because uh, uh, otherwise I'd probably cry over all the all the junk that that is uh, going on in our world. Uh, crazy, isn't it? I mean, just... Uh, you know, it's uh, really our our elections since Gore and Bush have become a circus. I mean, just a blooming circus is, you know, and, and these people just, uh, uh, you know, she used to be a scrapbooker. She hasn't done scrapbooking in a long time, but would that be, is that what that, oh, maybe like she, she has this cricket, Jan. And so maybe this like rolls on, you know, rolls something out or, yeah, I don't know. So, Becky, I know everyone needs a hobby, but I'm I'm afraid this has something to do with body parts or something, you know. This is not a good hobby, you know. I, I don't know if you realize, John Wayne Gacy used to, he was a serial killer and, and he'd take his victims and bury them in the, in in the uh, the underneath his house, so I, I don't know. I, I need to start. I need to evaluate my wife. I should probably have her uh, have some kind of a evaluation done. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I have to be serious today. Um, like I said, if we we get caught up in all of this junk. You could uh, lose your mind. I, I know that for sure. So we do not want to lose our mind. It's a terrible place to go losing your mind. And uh, I had a, I had a friend uh, write this uh, this morning. <clears throat> he said, uh, as an in, as an American, I'm infuriated as a father. I'm concerned as a pastor. I'm prayerful. As a Christian, I'm completely at peace. And if, and I understand that. That is, I mean, as an American, I am infuriated at at what this has, uh, uh, our election process has become. It, it is such a circus. And as a father, absolutely. I am concerned for my kids. I, I am concerned about what what kind of country is uh going to be here for my children and 
Lord willing, one of these days, my own grandchildren. And, uh, you know, but you got to remember also in that, that, that those kids were born for this time. And, and we always need to remember that. And, you, you know, this, this isn't the country that, that I grew up in, but I, I would say every generation could say that too. And so, you know, we, uh, we always need to remember that. And, and, uh, but, you know, as a father, I am concerned as a pastor, I need to make sure that I'm prayerful. I, I, uh, we can get so caught up in this and, and I do. And, and, you know, I started reading the news this morning and, you know, isn't it amazing how all these things happen, uh, in the, in the darkness of night? Uh, I mean, you know why, and, and we know why. Why? Why do things happen at night? Why? Why is this? Why? You know, all of a sudden it's late at night that votes change, and and uh, well, you know the 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 world, the unsaved, has always loved the darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. I mean that that is the fact, and so we're in an evil world, and 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 as a pastor, I can't I can't let the anger and the infuriation um, dictate uh, my responses to things. And I need to be prayerful. I, I need to, <clears throat> I need to set an example of, of, uh, you know, standing for what's right. And, and uh, we, we just take a stand. We don't have to be, um, you know, crazy like like the the world is right now. And I don't know if you guys have been watching this. Antifa has been idiotic in Denver over the last couple of days. And the the thing that that the left doesn't understand, or maybe they do, and they just don't care. This they're, they're power hungry greed mongers. And really, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't trust Republicans either. You know, we, we can say, well, we got the Supreme court. We, we, we still have the Senate and I, I don't trust a single Senator. Okay. And, and so <clears throat> I, I don't know that, uh, uh that that's going to be a good thing or, or not. Hold on here. Sorry. I gotta, I gotta do something here. I gotta, I gotta, shut people up here. I forgot to mute my phone. So I apologize, but <clears throat> I, don't, I don't trust them to do the right thing at all. And, uh, I don't trust Supreme court either, <clears throat> but I, I just don't trust people. I, I, you know, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I trust God and I trust his word and, uh, uh, anyone in any kind of politics. I'm sorry. I just don't trust them. And, uh, that's just the way it's going to be the, the circus that we're in today, um, yeah, yeah, you know, you know what it is. <laughs> and I know, I know I gotta get into this, but the, the, the ride we're in in politics, you guys ever remember going to the fairs and they had the little carnivals there and everything. And, you know, they had the Ferris wheel and they had the little, they had that thing that spin around and just make you sicker than a dog. And, and do you ever pay attention to the guys that ran those machines? You know what I'm saying? I mean, they they weren't probably your stellar examples of the community, and and uh, um, so they are, uh, you know, uh, you know, not very trustworthy kind of characters. Well, that's kind of the way that I look at politicians today. We're in this ride, this circus ride, and the politicians are those dudes taking your ticket and running the roller coaster, and. Uh, so anyway, but as a Christian, so as a as a pastor, I am prayerful, and I need to be prayerful, and and I need to I need to stand for, uh, and 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 be a shepherd, and and keep preaching the word, and and keep, you know, I'm the one that needs to talk people off the off the ledge, and and not be the guy that's on the ledge, and and uh, and but as a Christian. I, I need to be completely at peace at this. We, we need to know that, look, God knows that if there's cheating going on and we're, there, there's not an American in this country that in their right mind wouldn't agree that there's some cheating going on. Sorry, even if, it, if it's on the crazy left, you got to know that your side is cheating to get this done. So, and, and, but, but God knows 
God knows all of this, and and I have to rest in that, and and I have to be at peace with this. And no, I don't want to give up my country, and and no, I don't want to give up what what we are because what what people in some of our pacifist preachers out there are you know that they they're misinterpreting Romans chapter thirteen. I mean, Paul was in prison numerous times because he broke the law. Okay, so. Don't tell me that you're some blind sheep that we just do whatever the law tells us and and uh, we're all going to get along and and uh, um, go back and, and quit reading John Piper in these these theologians that are shallow as a mud puddle and and tell me that that that's what we do and and uh, Paul would have never been in jail then if he would have followed the directions the directives of some of these characters but anyway. We need to we need to stand for what's right and 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 we need to be at peace with whatever does take place, knowing that it's in God's hands. And we need to do our part. We need to do our part as a believer. We need to do our part as as a citizen and and uh, as a Christian citizen. And so let's stand for what's right and let's do what's right and 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 let's be what what would truly be honoring to God. And let's make sure we do that. Don't don't let our attitudes get soured to the point where where we can't be pleasing to God and, and we're acting in carnality. Uh, that That's what, and look, I tell you these things, I'm not preaching to you, I'm telling you this because this is what I, I found this morning in my own life. I need to make sure that, that my walk with God is what it needs to be. And so I read this, uh, the, this morning in Ezekiel chapter 14. And before I get into Ezekiel, I, I, I want to read something about Ezekiel. You want to talk about some bad times. And we, we think that our times are bad, and, and they are, okay? There's some real challenges going on. It could get to this. But Ezekiel was a prophet that, remember when when uh, Judah was finally taken captive. Israel, the, the divided nations, Israel had already been taken captive. Now, we're talking about Judah is finally being taken captive and uh, uh, taken to Babylon under the direction of Nebuchadnezzar, right? Who was not a nice guy at all, was very violent and and uh, very uh, egonomical, you could say, and, and just a crazy nut, all right? So Ezekiel then was, was chosen by God to be a prophet during these times of Babylon. And so he, he's walking in the streets of Babylon. So I want to read this in a book I was reading. Ezekiel was a man who chose to obey God. <laughs> Although he was a priest, he served as a Jewish street preacher in Babylon for 22 years, telling everyone about God's judgment and salvation and calling them to repentance and obedience. Now, that's the directive, okay? That's the directive that Ezekiel had. Honestly, that's the directive we have today, okay? Whatever happens, no matter how crazy things get, we have a directive, go with the gospel. And, and, and we need to make disciples and, and we need to baptize them and, and teach them every doctrine and in and, and the truth of the God's of God's word. I mean, that's what we need to do. And calling people to repentance and calling people to obedience. And Ezekiel lived what he preached. I mean, get this. During his ministry. God told him to illustrate his messages with dramatic object lessons. And here's some of them. Some of these acts included lying on his side for 390 days, during which he could eat only one eight-ounce meal a day cooked over manure. Another one, shaving his head and beard. And then thirdly, showing no sorrow when his wife died. And Ezekiel did what God asked and obeyed and faithfully proclaimed God's word. Now, here's the question. God may not ask you to do anything quite so dramatic or difficult, but if he did, would you obey? I, 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 uh, that's convicting to me. I, I mean, you, you think about what, what this man went through and, 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 uh, uh, I, I just, <clears throat> wow, you know, to, to think uh, of in, in, in that last one gets to me where you don't even grieve, you, 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 or at least you don't show any grief for the loss of your wife. Uh, I, and, 
And then I then I was reading here in Ezekiel, and, and I wanted to bring these verses out in chapter 14. And look, he's preaching on, on the judgment of God. And and now by this time, during while, while in Ezekiel is preaching, Daniel is very much alive, and Daniel's in leadership now, and Daniel's making a stand and, and has a a wonderful testimony to, to the other uh, uh, Jews that are there and, and definitely the remnant. But he brings something out that I think we all need to pay attention to in chapter 14 <clears throat> or chapter 14, verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Then look at verse 16. Though these men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. <laughs> Verse 18, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Verse 20, Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall ne deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. <clears throat> first thing, first thing that jumped out at me is that that I, I can't, I, even as much as I would want to be, I cannot be responsible and, and and I cannot take upon myself the decisions of other people. And as badly as, as I would want my, uh, and, and I praise the Lord, the profession of faith of my children, and, and I thank God for that, but ultimately it came down to a decision that they have to make. Now, I, I needed to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord to where it was an easy decision for them to trust Christ because they've watched my life and, and watched how I have trusted Christ and trusted the Lord and and walked with him through all of this. And, and, and through that, making it an easy testimony for them also to trust in, in, in the Savior, okay? <clears throat> but ultimately, it's up to them. And, and it shows me here the importance, the very importance that we are sharing the gospel and that we are living our life in a way that, that people can see our faith and, in, and, and looking at that and, and making it easy for them to see that, hey, Jesus is the one to trust. And right now, right now in all this mess and in all this chaos, they need to be able to look at our lives, and there's tons of unrest. Look, <clears throat> what has there been, like four four suicides here in Morgan County in the last week or so? And don't hold me to that number, but I think that is. In Morgan County, I, I mean, I heard that on election night, the, the ambulance crews were just crazy busy and even had to call in help. <clears throat> don't don't tell me that that things aren't bad. All right, they are. I, I know that. I understand that. I I realize that that this lockdown and uh, the this is an oppression, and it's not just a governmental oppression. It is a spiritual oppression that's going on, and and the the most important thing that we have right now. And yes, I, I want to see Trump back in. And yes, I want to see the cheating stifled. And, and, and I want to see them, you know, justice to prevail. Yes, I, I want all of those things. But you realize even if Trump gets back in, the chaos now, <clears throat> that's going to be the, the case. I mean, the chaos of uh, um, uh, he, he won't be the savior. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the only answer the only answer that we have is Christ. And, and we need to, to realize that God said the judgment is here and people are going to lose their lives. And, and you, are, you can't be responsible for someone else's decision, but let us make sure that they can see our faith 
and that it makes it easy for them to trust in the Savior and, and uh, the responsibility that we have to set the example and and be the be the believer that we need to be. I I am not a pacifist, and I'm not telling you to be a pacifist. And 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 we need to, we need to stand for what's right, and we need to stand for justice and and those things. But uh, we we need to realize that more importantly than fighting for Trump is that we need to fight for the truth and the reality that God is the answer and that Christ is the one that we need to look to. And and when we forget that, then we lose our testimony. And and we are not giving people the hope that they need, and that's why people are committing suicide in droves, and and the and and those that are hooked on on alcohol and drugs and are are, are getting worse and worse as, as the days go by because they have they have no hope. We have the hope, and and we need to tell people, and 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 we need to be more adamant now than ever, and. And we could really honestly care less what 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 the politicians say and and they're they're gonna do everything they can to lock us down and to shut us up and 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 uh this spiritual oppression and that is what it is. They can say what they want, shutting the businesses down. I mean, our schools are being shut down again, and, and all I can say on our public school system is Welcome to, to socialism, communism, that that the public school system has been promoting for years and years and years. And and then we as Christians continue to support this trash. And then we turn around, we support these state universities that all it is is, is anti-God teaching. And we think that our kids must go there in order to be successful. And 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 then we're we're dealing with that product because we as believers have gotten to the point and been duped into this and 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 the oppression is coming and and look you know people can you need to be preaching love and you need to be preaching hope hey i have all the hope in the world that jesus is the answer but i'm sure not going to tell you that it's all roses and pretty tulips out there in this world today and that that all is going to be okay as long as we live at peace with our government and the, what are you going to do if things get harder to, to preach the gospel? What are you going to do if, if you find out the Supreme Court is a farce and, and they all turn and, and, the, and the Republicans cave in the Senate and do, well, this is what the, the country wants, so this is what we're going to do? I mean, I, my hope has absolutely nothing to do with this government, and yours shouldn't be either. And we need to understand that 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 God has this and God's the answer. And if the government was the answer, people wouldn't be dying in droves over suicide and addiction. But we're, we're not hearing any of that. It's squelched and, and put under the rug. And, and, and look, the truth is, is that we are in, a, in an oppressed state of society and, and it's a spiritual oppression. And the only way you get through that is by looking to Christ and living for him. So live for him. You know, that that's what we need to do. And quit playing games and quit playing church or quit playing Christian and, and be real about who you are and, and, and live in a way that, that shows people that, hey, God's got this. He's got it. And so let's set an example and and let us see our children saved and and let us see our grandchildren trust Christ as our savior and and let's tell our our neighbors about Jesus and 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 let them know that he is the only answer that's going to give us any peace. I mean that's that's what we need. We got to have that. And, and 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 if we don't have that then who in the world has the answer if we're not going to tell them, you know? And and how we need to do that. And, and I want to end with this because I, I believe God, God can do whatever God wants to do. And, and, and I believe that he is waking people up and, and definitely waking up, uh, uh, believers. But th this is talking, this is, uh, 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 um, oh, I got to get back here, right page here. Um, in 1904, October 31st, there were nightly prayer meetings that were held. And, and this was uh, kind of the, the, the beginning of the Welsh revival. And, and, and uh, uh, here's, here's how it was described, okay? They, 
there were some people that that started having uh, nightly prayer meetings in Mariah Chapel, and and so they they were having these prayer meetings, and and uh, this was what was written by one that was in attendance. The revival meetings were extraordinary. Some people would be crying for joy, others crying for sorrow over their sin. Several people would be praying at the same time for their friends, parents, or children. Some would be singing, others telling people about the joy that they now experience. The chapels were filled to capacity, and there were crowds of people on the roads outside. Yet there was no disorder in the meetings. They lasted until 2, 3, or 4 o'clock in the morning. The revival spread like wildfire from place to place all over the country where people had been praying that such a thing would happen. I mean, it's, the, it's powerful. And, 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 and look, people are afraid today. And, and look, if you're a believer and, and you're afraid, you need to go to Psalm 91, okay? Read Psalm 91. Read, read it over and over. If, if you get a chance, go on, uh, go on PlatteValleyBaptistChurch.org and, and go to the live stream and go to the archives and, and, and watch last Wednesday night's service where Paul Crow preached on Psalm 91. And don't tell me that doesn't have prevalence to, for us today. It, it does. And, and, and we can use that in our lives today. And, and, but here it says to see God work in amazing ways. The beginning is always bathed in prayer. People are terrified today, and we as believers need to stand up and, and in the midst of fear, be courageous and tell people the truth. And, and we need to be praying that God would use us. We need to be praying that God will, will break the hearts of, of, of people and see that they need to repent and come to trust Christ. And, 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 and it starts, first of all, with us. But we must be sure that our prayers are not hindered by our own sin. God delights in the prayer of his child who's right with him. When our relationship with the Lord is not right, however, our prayers become an abomination. It does not matter what we do or how we pray. God will not bless a person who is living in sin against his commands. Only when we are completely right with God will our prayers become a delight to our Heavenly Father. Is there anything in your life hindering your prayers today? Inspect before you intercede and whatever God shows you, eliminate so that your prayers will be his delight. I mean, that that's, look, Satan keeps the turmoil coming. And and, and, and yeah, it, it, hey, it's easy to keep the world in turmoil. He, he knows that, but he's not after that. He, he's after, let's keep the believers in turmoil. Let us keep them angry. Let us keep them focused on, on this chaos. Let us keep them focused on things that, that that the frustration of things that they can't change and 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 they can't fix and so they stay frustrated in this and and when they do that then their hearts aren't right and their relationship their fellowship with Christ isn't what it needs to be and they are impotent in their in their testimony and that's when satan has us well don't let him win don't let him win be at a complete peace in knowing Hey, I'm going to do what I need to do, and I'm going to do everything I can to be right in in being a citizen of the this country and standing for justice. But ultimately, I am at complete peace that whatever does take place, God's got it, and I am not going to let Satan get the victory. I am I'm going to live in a way <clears throat> that is honoring to Him, and I'm going to live in a way that people can look at my life and and let me make it easy for them to see. Jesus is a savior. He's the one that's got it under control. <clears throat> and I completely trust him. That's what I see in my life. Have I done very well at that? No, no. But is there things that I can do to, to be better at that? Absolutely. And I'm going to, and, and, and I want to see God honored and glorified in my life. I want to see him honored and glorified in your life. And so just don't let the devil get the victory in, in any of this. Let, let's give him the honor. Let's give him the glory. And let's keep serving him together. And, and now, <laughs> uh, remember, we're going to see this over here in, in Hebrews 10 in a couple of days. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, 
but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I'm telling you, Satan's going to do everything he can to shut the church down because he knows the power comes when believers get together, they pray together, they serve together, they worship together, and, and they live in a way that honors God together. Uh, most important thing you're going to find through all this challenge is your local church and, and how we need to be supporting that and walking together. And I'm telling you, however bad it gets, those doors aren't going to be shut at Platte Valley. And if Sheriff Martin wants to watch this and he comes out and tells me again that, hey, if I get a court order, I'm going to serve you the court order. You know what? God's got this. And God's bigger than our sheriff. God's bigger than the county health department. God's bigger than Governor Polis. God's bigger than Kamala Harris and, and lost Joe Biden. And, and God's bigger than, than the, anything that's out there. God's bigger. We're going to obey him. And we're going to serve him. And we're going to walk with him. And we're going to do what we know that we need to do. And we're going to serve him. And, and that is it. That's it. And we're going to trust him. And, and I, don't, I don't do this to call anybody out. I'm just saying that we need to live by conviction and by a love to do what our Savior tells us, even if he calls for us for 390 days to lay on our side and eat an eight-ounce dinner cooked over manure. We need to do it. We serve him. That's it. That's our directive. Keep serving him. Keep walking with him. Keep doing what it is that God wants you to do. And we stand, we stand, and, and we love him because this is as bad as it gets for a believer. It only gets better. And uh, one day, when we're in eternity, yep, it'll all be worth it. God bless you guys. Have a great week. It's Friday, or have a great weekend. It's Friday. Love to see you Sunday, 945, 1045. Not a better time to have meetings with Dwight and Paul than this weekend and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. No better time than right now. God, revive us. Bring us, bring us to, the, to, to the, the brokenness and see the reality of his power in our lives and let him use us. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend.